Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers DFS Podcast with your hosts, Kyle Borgannoni and Matthew Betts. Hello, DFSers. It's, uh, it's one last ride. It's one last ride or die with Borg and Betts. Betts, how are you feeling, man? Equal parts happy and sad, man. I mean, we have arguably the best game of the year here with the Super Bowl. Super exciting. Lots of fun stuff to talk about. But yeah, dude, we go into hibernation for, what, eight months until football season is back. So I am very excited for Sunday's game. I am very sad that we won't be able to talk on the mic for a few months. I, you know, it, it's it's going to be sad not to see your face on this podcast. But yeah, I mean, we do have the biggest game possible. I mean... If there's ever another Super Bowl that was meant for the fantasy footballers, I mean, this is Super Bowl. There you go. So that's pretty That's pretty awesome. It's pretty great timing. And yeah, for our DFS podcast, we've had a fun year getting to do this together and really got to build out a lot of things for the DFS portion of the fantasy footballers, this DFS pass, DFS pod. And man, we've got some stuff cooking that you and I have talked about a lot uh, just over the last couple of weeks, just kind of recapping so yeah it's been a fun ride this year man and i want to ask you a quick question before we get into the super bowl talk about the showdown slate and then we're going to talk about some of our favorite props but what do you do what do you look forward to during fantasy we call it preseason here fantasy footballers because we're preparing for the next season what do, what do you do what does it look like for you what are you excited about for this next kind of february through really august Yeah, my usual year calendar goes as such. Zero sleep from August until January with football season here. Uh, And then there's about a month where I'm like, all right, I need to just step back for a period of time, enjoy some some time with the wife, you know, do some things that I've been putting off for a while, a couple house projects, those kind of things. And then all of a sudden it's March, free agency's here, and then it just goes from then on because you're looking at dynasty, you're looking at rookie profiles, you're looking at getting ready for redraft season, best ball. It, It just doesn't stop. And that's what you love about the NFL. It's 365, even when they're not playing. So yeah, I try to step away for a couple weeks here just to take a little bit of time to recoup recharge the batteries but man i'd be lying if i said come like march i'm like man i really wish it was the football season so i don't i don't enjoy that time too much i love doing this so yeah it's it's all about the balance of course in the off season and i know bets you've recently become one of the main thought leaders of nba dfs during the off season <laughs> that is true i have embarked on a mission kyle to turn you into a complete DFS degen with me and just play NBA DFS every night. I have played for like nine straight nights and it is exhausting, but I won't lie. It's been actually pretty profitable. So I'm having a ton of fun with it. We've gotten to play a couple of times uh, where we've just texted back and forth and done lineups. I used to do originally it was baseball DFS is what I was first into. Uh, But yeah, for me, the preseason looks a little different this year we're releasing with uh the udk this year a dynasty pass and that also comes with the dfs pass so i know we're talking you know 2021 season right now in february but there's just so much that we get to build out i know bets you're doing a lot of the rookie profile articles on the website uh looking at this next year's rookie class but if you're at all interested uh that goes on pre-order this Sunday during the Super Bowl, and you get a really sweet deal. You get to see some of our Dynasty content. And then the crazy part this next year is that if you get the Ultimate Draft Kit Plus, you also get the DFS Pass. So really, I think there's going to be a lot of people that get to jump into DFS uh, that maybe in the past said, I don't really know if I want to add that on. It's a part of the deal this next year. And you actually get to save $40. So I know I'm kind of plugging something. Uh, that's for the future, but you get a sweet deal. You get access to our dynasty pass, which is packed full of rookie rankings and opportunity charts and, and so many other things that I really, this is what I've been doing the last couple of weeks since jumping on full time with a footballer. So it is a sweet time. And for DFS, I would just say, look back at your process, look and see, you know, when you look at your spreadsheet and, and that's what Bets and I kind of do, we start to kind of track, Hey, how did I do week to week? Look back and see where you went wrong. Write down some thoughts now that it's fresh in your mind before you forget and you deposit in August and you forget those lessons. So anything else you would tell people just on reflecting on the season and what to do now? I know it's February, but it's important. 
Yeah, and it sort of depends on what type of player you are. If you've been doing this for a while and you're pretty serious, then you probably have a pretty refined process of looking at, you know, what contest did I cash in most on? Uh, was I a great cash player? Was I a better tournament player? All those things are something to consider because entering these contests blindly, while sometimes is exciting and sort of works, being able to really have a process of being like, this is this is how I win in DFS. How you win, Kyle, in DFS is definitely different than how I win in DFS, which is how you know every other listener is different in, in terms of how they go about their process. So I think finding the right thing and taking just a little bit of time to reflect on the season in terms of what went well and, and maybe what to improve upon is, is really, really important. And hopefully you and I can put out some content in the off season as we look towards the summer of looking at... Um, the building blocks of tr- like truly understanding DFS because it's it's great to get lost in the weeds of player process and the snow model and all those sort of things, which uh, clearly works. Um, but it really is important to sort of have a, a great foundation as to how to approach this game that we love so much. So yeah, man, the, the off season is is just as important, I think, as as the weekly contest you enter. And I know right now you're going through a legal process of getting that model uh, copyrighted bets. Uh, and you're getting a provisional patent, I believe, because it's actually functional on, on many different levels. So that's what you're going to be doing in the off season, uh, just so that every single time anyone mentions the word snow or model, uh, you get a tenth of of a cent. Is that, is that correct? <laughs> be watching. I don't even know if this is still a show anymore, but people will be watching America's Next Top Model. And I'll just be cashing every time they say it. <laughs> it's model. Be great. Model. No, no. You you're going places with that model. It worked. Every time. I, I don't think insane. people realize <laughs> every insane. every single time. <laughs> so let's get into the main slate. State of the main slate. And when we're talking about the main slate, we're talking about one game. We're talking about the Super Bowl and it's a showdown slate. And so for some of you guys that feel a little bit rusty about that, most of this show this year has been breaking down games, breaking down the highest over-unders, but we're, we're breaking down just one game here. So let's give a little refresher for the people about how we approach the showdown slate when there's just one game and we're dealing with captains on DraftKings or MVPs on FanDuel. It's a little different for people. So this might be elementary, but it's a good refresher just to remind yourself of how you tactically approach this a little bit differently than how you do the rest. So bets. What's the biggest difference for you when you think of approaching a showdown slate? Yeah, the biggest thing is kind of understanding that this is we're trying to project literally one game and we know that football is the highest variance sport that exists. So um, I think being willing to understand that that the game script you predict may not go the way you think it's going to. And you need to kind of sort of be willing to build multiple lineups around different game scripts. So I think that's the first thing is is sort of being okay with um, maybe not what you expect to happen. The other thing is that we have a lot of rules in DFS. Typically, we always talk about correlation and really wanting to stack and all those sort of things. And I'm not saying that that's not important here, but you know, you're trying to basically in, in tournaments, at least you're trying to, you know, hit the the best possible outcome and the the probably the least likely. Like it doesn't make sense that Leonard Fournette and Ronald Jones are going to score the most points together because most people don't want to play them together. But what if like that happens? So sort of throw the rules, so to speak, out the window for these sort of slates. And then I would say just the last thing is um, sort of be willing to be really thoughtful about roster percentages, especially in tournaments. If you want to get, you know, sneaky and and sort of build lineups that way, I think that's a great way to at least start thinking about things. Whereas normally in season when it's a a full slate, I don't worry about that to start. I, I identify the plays that I like the most. And then sort of get different from there in tournaments if I want to. But, um, you know, everyone and their mother wants to click the button on Patrick Mahomes. But what happens if he's not the best scoring player on the slate? It could happen. So I think people willing to think outside the box. Yeah, and usually with the Super Bowl, uh, this is where people play the large tournaments. I, I find showdown slates to be very tricky for cash. You just get buried yeah. if you, you just pick. Gotta em- you got to embrace the variance, man. It's just, it's wild. It's the Wild Wild West out there. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what makes it so fun because everyone is watching this game. And so every single play is so valuable in how we do it. And so I would say one tip, we'll go through this game. We'll kind of talk about it from 10,000 foot view. And then we'll talk about how we construct lineups. But be willing to leave some money on the table. That's how you get different. Because usually when we're constructing lineups, Bets and I are giving you the best roster with maybe somebody who's the free square of the week. You know, like, hey, here's a cheap running back or here's a wide receiver that's going to get a ton of volume you can't really approach it that way in showdown. And so the way that you get different is saying, all right, I'm going to leave, you know, a thousand dollars on the table. 
I mean, that sounds insane to normally do bets, but that's actually the way that you uh, you differentiate yourself from the rest of the crowd. So that's one piece of advice. I'm there are so many different combinations. I started sitting down and, and writing some of these. I was like, okay, let's say I use Mahomes, but then I don't use Kelsey, and I, you, you could go so many different directions. So you can't cover all your bases, but uh, pick a game script and run with it. That's usually uh, what we say. Yep, for sure. So, and I think too, like the other the other thing to consider, and I talked about this a little bit in the uh, the showdown preview that's in the DFS pass. My my kind of full thoughts in there is that there's sort of a chalk build most of the time. Like, okay, who's the highest scoring team? Who's their quarterback? He's my captain, and then I'll just pair him with a couple pass catchers and then go from there. And I think just sort of like understanding that you're you're basically like in the lottery at this point and knowing that there's so much variance like you said cash games are so much harder in this format so i'm normally like a single entry maybe three max type of player in tournaments but i'm definitely willing to be like i'm entering a 20 max or 150 or something this weekend because you just you embrace it and you you sort of hope for the best basically is my thought process no i think that's good advice because bets you're usually more of a of a cash game player and i play cash but i'll lean a little bit more towards gpp but in this scenario, it's uh, it's definitely, you know, you need to get crazy. And that's why I think player props is so valuable in this because it, it gives you an opportunity to say, okay, I like analyzing things and I like analyzing the games and seeing the tendencies. So that maybe that's where the market's a little bit softer and where I could take advantage. So we'll get to those in just a second, but let's break down this game bets. Yep. Kansas City Chiefs. And I get to say at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because they're playing at home, which is wild. It is wild. It's it's crazy to say that. But yeah, the Chiefs are three point. I don't even call it road home, whatever. Three point favorites, 56 and a half point total. Um, I'll just throw this out first. 56 and a half bets. I know that that's doable for two teams that offensively can move the football. When they played each other in week 12, this game hit the under. That game had a 56 point total. The Chiefs were also three point favorites. And they won 27-24. So the Chiefs recently, man, in the last 10 games, they're 10 or they're 2 and 8 against the spread. So the last 10 games, they're 2 and 8 against the spread. Tampa Bay's the exact opposite. They're doing awesome, 7-3 against the spread. So, what's your first take in terms of the line? Usually we break down the game, but what do you think about the Vegas line? Yeah, I like Chiefs minus 3 in terms of the outlook here. Um I am going to be building a lot of my lineups in that game script type of scenario. And when I look at this game, I think there's there's probably four possible outcomes that exist. Um, if you think the Chiefs win, do you think they win in a close game? If so, you have a lot of options at your disposal to, to build around your lineup. If you think they win in a blowout, then you just want to maybe go Chiefs onslaught. And if you think this game is a Bucks blowout, which I don't really think is going to happen, then you go heavy on the Bucks. And if you think it's more of a, an even split, but the Bucks win, then maybe you kind of lean towards the Bucks with a more of a balanced roster. I think three of those four are probably more realistic possibilities with the Bucks probably not going to blow out the Chiefs just because Mahomes is so good. So it's a, it's a tight spread. It's going to be really intriguing. I lean Chiefs minus three, though. And then as far as the over-under, 56 and a half, it, it kind of crosses that key number in terms of over-unders at 56. So I lean under, but I don't really have a strong take, to be honest with you, on that spread, on that game total, I should say. it's it's seems about right. Yeah, my first read is to definitely lean towards the under. But imagine being at your Super Bowl party, and I know it looks different this year in 20, 2021, but... Imagine being your Super Bowl party rooting for the under, saying, I want this game to be about defense. And every you know, time Ryan stuck up jocks on the field, you, you high five your buddy. <laughs> I cannot wait for us to discuss kickers, by the way, bets. Like oh, that is a dream it. come true. We're getting for DFS it. kickers. Uh, I'm excited about that. But yeah, I lean towards the under, uh, not just because of where KC's been against the spread. But uh, 56 and a half is a lot uh, to put up. When they did play earlier, that was that game that Tyreek Hill just went bananas. We both played him that week, Bets. You remember we... That was whew. that was scary times. We we both were about to lose a quite a bit of money that week. Thank you, Mr. Tyreek Hill and Patrick Mahomes. The stack saved us in cash. Yeah, I, I, I remember we played that stack and they were the afternoon slate. And so it was looking rough for us. And that first touchdown, we were like, we, dude, I think we cashed. And then the second one, and then the third one, and then we bought a yacht. It was awesome. Yeah, it was great. We, and Brooks helped us with that one. It was it was it was beautiful. But Kansas City they dominated time of possession that first matchup, thirty six minutes to twenty three minutes. I don't think it'll be that 
uh, big of a discrepancy this time. Tampa Bay, here's the thing. They're a pretty efficient offense, and they move the ball down the field. And one of the key stats that I've looked at the most is how bad Kansas City is in the red zone. They are the worst defense in the regular season against uh, opposing teams in the red zone. The worst in terms of giving up touchdowns. So that's something we need to factor in. It's playoff time, so maybe it's a little uh, different of an edge. This team is definitely, you know, knows how to win. But I I think that's a a big point to think about with Mike Evans and think about Rob Gronkowski because Gronk has basically been written off. I just think there's some red zone weapons that, that we can use. But where do you want to start with this game? Yeah, I think we should start with that point there. Let's let's talk about the Bucks in terms of what we like about their side of the ball because I think that point is huge. And the red zone defense for Kansas City is a big time weakness. Uh, and we've seen Tampa be able to put up points with ease relatively uh, in the last several weeks. The offense is humming. I think there's a ton of value on Tampa, even in game scripts where you project the Chiefs to win. Because, you know, Tom Brady certainly, I think he's, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's priced as the fifth or fourth most expensive option. I think it's fourth um, in terms of captain salary on DraftKings. I can almost guarantee you he's going to come in at 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 least fourth um, behind Mahomes, behind Tyreek, behind Travis Kelsey. There is a a real possibility that Tom Brady scores more fantasy points in this game than Patrick Mahomes, and and people aren't going to play that. So to me, I'm playing Tom Brady, honestly, and probably... 90% 90% of the lineups that I create, whether it is as a captain, because he's shown ceiling, right? He's been at 30 plus DK points in five of 19 games this year. He's got 20 plus, I think and it's like six of his last seven or something off the top of my head. So he's just been so consistent. And he's either in as for me as a cash game play as a flex or in tournaments. I love him as a captain. I'm not sure what your thoughts are on the old man TB12. Yeah, so let me just put this out there. I can't stand Tom Brady as a Falcons fan <laughs> and as a human being. He's just he's just one of my least favorite football players. I respect him that he's a winner, but man, I can't stand the Patriots and I definitely can't stand the Bucks who are in our division. All that aside, Tom Brady is probably the one I'll play the most between Mahomes and Brady because of tournaments, because of the way that Mahomes is clearly the cover boy for the league. I mean, people are going to want to play this guy because he's favored on the winning team in the Super Bowl. Like, it's just, it's not hard to do. And so Brady makes a ton of sense. He's too cheap, in my opinion. For a showdown slate, he is way too cheap. And for some of you guys, maybe you haven't been playing showdown, you haven't recognized this, but he is a good 2,000 cheaper than Mahomes. Then when you factor that in uh, for DraftKings, the one and a half multiplier for salary, it's just way too cheap at 15,000. So Kansas City's allowing the ninth most deep balls and the dude's leading the league in deep ball attempts. So I I think that Tom Brady makes a ton of sense on both ends. But if you're playing tournaments, he's a really easy captain to gain leverage off Mahomes. I'm seeing Mahomes in terms of our our early projections, and and this could go back and forth, and he's going to be 50 plus percent as captain. And that's... That's a ton to make up. Let's say Brady's half that, 20, 25%. Maybe that's a little even too high. But even that, you're just gaining a ton of leverage because the rest of the field is probably playing Hill or Kelsey. So in just in terms of the math, he makes a ton of sense. He should be the second highest rostered captain because he's a quarterback. Uh, is that how you feel? Oh, yeah, for sure. And I think the thing sometimes people get worried about is like, oh, does he fit the game script the correct way? Well, he'll fit either way, basically. So the first scenario is the Chiefs get ahead early, and then great, Tom Brady's throwing the entire second half to try to keep up. And we've seen Tampa uh, pretty much abandon the run when they get down by more than a score. So if the Chiefs get up to a big lead, Tom Brady's going to be chucking it left and right. The other thing is if they have a great game and they get out to a lead, predictably, and I'm sorry, Leonard Fournette truthers, it's probably because of Tom Brady. (laughs) That's the reality. So he's safe if they're winning. He's safe if they're losing because he can get there just on volume alone. So I think he's a, a standout GPP captain, in my opinion. I'm going to have a lot of them, for sure. Yeah, and for me, it's it's half emotional bets. It's I don't want Tom Brady to do well, but if he's going to do well, maybe he will... I better win will... some money. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Tom. Um, but what's different about Showdown is we're not having to compare two players. You know, it's not like, like which quarterback do you pick? Like, well... You could pick both if you really wanted to, and maybe you'd have a really tough build. But 
you are trying to gain leverage. And that's the biggest key for showdown is if you're playing Brady at the captain, you're basically saying, all right, what would this look like if the chiefs kept things close, but it wasn't through only Mahomes? Let's say Mahomes throws two touchdowns. Like that's fine. But maybe one of those touchdowns goes to CH or maybe they get a defensive touchdown. You know, there's just so many scenarios here where you're basically saying, okay, what if Mahomes isn't the highest scoring quarterback? Like what, what if he's the third highest scoring player? That actually is not good for this type of game and, and these type of builds. So um, any thoughts on just Mahomes and because he's the most popular player, what do you need him to do? Yeah, because he's the most popular, you need him to outscore the rest of the field by a pretty decent margin to actually have it be worth it, but given the salary as the most expensive. But then given that, like we said, he's the most popular, so he's going to be the most heavily rostered captain. And don't hear what we're not saying. He's a great play. Play him for sure. I prefer him in the flex because we've seen just quarterback scoring historically is always higher than a wide receiver, than a running back, and a 99.9% of the time than a tight end, right? So it makes sense that almost all of your lineup should feature one of Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes, in my opinion, in the captain spot. And then for sure in your flex spot, if you're not going to play those guys, you know, you want to go Tyreek, you want to go Travis Kelsey, you want to get Mike Evans in the captain spot, fine, do it. But in my opinion, like it, it's just, it is an optimal decision to put both quarterbacks in your lineup. It just, you don't get leverage on the field that much because everyone else is doing it. But the chances of you finding a player that's going to outscore them are so low that these guys to me are essentially lock buttons somewhere in my lineup. For sure. And if you if you do want to play cash, and like we said, we recommend cash 50-50s as a, as a place to start and build, like, please play those. Then, yeah, if you want to say, I'm going to go Brady at, at captain and then bring him a Holmes, then go for it. Like, it's, it's a smart way to approach this game, but we're looking at it from a perspective of this is one game, one sample size, and there's so many different scenarios. It, in the DFS pass, Bets and I kind of get to highlight that. You did the showdown slate article. I did the pace of play. And one of my parts in the pace of play is I picked five wild scenarios that if they happened, uh, here's how you could build your lineup. So if you want to, you can check that out in the DFS pass. But uh, let's keep going. Uh, so we talked about Brady. We talked about Mahomes. We'll talk about some more builds in a second. But in terms of the running backs, this is kind of hard. It, it, like these are four running backs here. I don't count Lev Bell. Uh you wrote in here, Lev Bell is $800 if you want to experience pain. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to have the worst Super Bowl Sunday ever, play Le'Veon Bell. What about LaShawn McCoy, man? <laughs> this game is like the most ultimate <laughs> running backs don't matter matchup of all time. I, you, you tweeted that out, what, like last week at this time? Like, how are <laughs> LaShawn McCoy and Leonard Fournette, or I forget who the players were that you mentioned, but uh, and Le'Veon Bell on Super Bowl rosters, like just literally hanging out long for the ride. <laughs> He's going to back-to-back -back Super Bowls, man. LaShawn McCoy just chilling on the bench, wanted to to boost that Hall of Fame. Is, is he a Hall of Famer? I know you're an Eagles guy, but... No. <laughs> no, he's not. Okay. He had a good run, man, for a while, but uh, he, he maybe he can get another Super Bowl ring, <laughs> even though he didn't do anything the last two years. <laughs> but let's talk about these on the these two running backs. Inactives list. <laughs> <laughs> I it says on there like a little asterisk next to his, his uh, Hall of Fame bust. Like I I was in two Super Bowls. I did not do a thing. Uh, talk to me about your boy Fat Lynn. And uh, I know how much. I mean, you're wearing a, a Leonard Fournette jersey right now, right? I love that guy, man. He's just so good. Yeah, what an idiot am I? Faded this guy two weeks ago in Championship Week. Publicly admitted it on Twitter, and then we what do you know? Ten minutes later, he pulls off that spin move for the diving touchdown <laughs> and I just look like an idiot um but the reality is he's going to be pretty popular and he's getting a ton of work he has 55 percent of the team's carries and 16 percent target share over the last three weeks those numbers are fantastic so I'm not saying Leonard Fournette is a bad play I actually think he's a pretty good play just given the workload and the volume but again what type of 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 um, lineup are you trying to build? Are you trying to build a contrarian GPP lineup? If so, maybe it doesn't include Leonard Fournette because people know by now the story is Leonard Fournette is the lead back and it's been pretty obvious over the last couple of weeks. But there's just always this doubt in my mind, in the back of my mind, that you know Bruce Arians at any point in time is going to give Ronald Jones 15 plus carries out of left field and you're like, what 
just happened? And why did that just happen? And no one's going to be able to give you an answer. And so that's what I'm saying about embracing the variance that is associated with this game specifically, and not just on showdown in general, but for this game, like Bruce Arians, who knows how he's going to divvy up the backfield? Who knows if Antonio Brown is healthy enough to actually produce? Who knows if it's going to be Scotty Miller or um, Tyler Johnson as like the wide receiver three for the, the team if Antonio Brown can't go? There are just so many question marks. So that's what I'm saying. Just be willing to be different in this in this contest. And that includes the running backs, both Rojo and Lenny. You know, I realize we could probably talk about this game for like four hours because there are yeah. so many <laughs> different scenarios. And I want to mention this about Fournette. It's weird to say that he's a high floor option. He's got the receiving work, but at 7,800, if you look at the other higher price players in this game, you have Godwin and Evans, you know, over 8,000. And then you have Tyreek and you have Kelsey that are way over 10,000, 11,000 for Kelsey. So Fournette kind of fits in this range. That's like the next tier down. And so I can see a lot of builds where people are saying, all right, I'm going to play Mahomes in the captain and the MVP. And I'm going to stack him with either Hill or Kelsey. That's just going to be a given. And then I need somebody on the other side because I feel like Tampa Bay is going to keep it competitive. Fournette's going to get the receiving work. We've seen him get touchdowns. So I just think that's going to be a very popular build. Uh, I think that in terms of the running backs, he's going to be the most popular. Uh, it, just in terms of, if you don't even look at price, like he's going to be the guy that people want the most. Uh, so Fournette's fine. Uh, you just have to figure out which game script you want to roll with. And so if you're rolling with Brady as your captain, I don't really want to go for net. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think it's fine. Again, okay, there's no like real rules in this game, but I think that's less optimal. So I, I'm with you on that. I think that makes a, a pretty good amount of sense. Are these your two favorite running backs in league Rojo and Leonard Fournette? <laughs> <laughs> they definitely are my least favorites, but listen, man, Rojo at 2200 on DraftKings. He is it's down disrespectful. There. It, it is. I mean, granted, he hasn't really played much and he hasn't gotten a ton of work, but there are paths to him falling into the end zone twice and all of a sudden he's the optimal play in this backfield. So I'm going to play at least a couple shares of him just to kind of get some exposure in case that happens. I do think, though, that if you are going to do that, in my opinion, you need to be building in game scripts where the Bucks get out to an early lead or they just dominate. Because, again, he's pretty much a zero in the pass-catching role. So on DraftKings, especially if you're playing there, it's full PPR. It just has to be the perfect scenario for, for Rojo. So it's sort of um, it's sort of tricky. Yeah, in my, uh, I gave five scenarios. And it, my fourth craziest one is that Rojo is actually good and that he gets 15-plus carries. And if that happens, then you're looking at someone that can at least fall in the end zone at least once. And you're also finding yourself in a spot where, you know, you can basically say to yourself, uh, Rojo, it, he's going to score a touchdown. He's going to give you something a little bit more. And then you could easily stack him with the Tampa Bay defense. And the Tampa Bay defense is somebody that, I don't know, personally, I, I think is a little bit underrated in this game. And I find that with playing defenses, and this is a kind of a, a point that I want to make sure that uh, people understand when we get to play defenses as a flex in showdown slates, then we're also trying to figure out how that correlates with the rest of this. So you can play a defense with a quarterback, although that may sound counterintuitive. Like why would I play the Tampa Bay defense and Mahomes? Well, if Mahomes throws a pick six, then you're getting a touchdown there. But then you're also getting a touchdown because Mahomes is probably going to get the ball back. So playing a defense is kind of a contrarian way and then stacking it with a running back is is a really easy way to do that. So I think Ronald Jones is a wild play. Uh, I He's super cheap and I wouldn't rec really recommend it. But let's go to the Kansas City side bets. So tell me about the Kansas City running backs with CEH and Darrell Williams. Where would you go there with those dudes? The truthful answer is I do not know. And I think that if you're hearing anything out there about like, I have a strong opinion that it's CEH or I really think it's Daryl Williams. I, I just, I would be careful about what else you're hearing and reading. The truth is we don't know. I mean, we, we literally don't. They've, they've shown a tendency to give it to CEH. They've shown a tendency to give it to Daryl Williams. 
I will say one thing to consider is that I think the price difference between the two makes Darrell Williams kind of the obvious fit in most builds. He's uh, about $2,000 almost cheaper. I think 1800 off the top of my head, cheaper than CEH. So most people are going to say, well, I can't I can't afford Lenny and CEH. So fine, Darrell Williams, I'll take a shot. So I think CEH is a really good tournament play just given his price tag. He's 7000 on DraftKings. And I don't think he's going to come with as much roster percentage as Darrell Williams. And I will also say there was one play last uh, last game when they played the Bills. I put this out on social media where he runs a swing route. He gets popped by Jordan Poyer out of the backfield. He didn't touch the ball the rest of the game. But before the, that happened, he was the lead back for this Chiefs team. So maybe you could tell yourself a story that that's actually what they wanted to have happen. But then the injury or, or got banged up or shook or whatever um, didn't allow them to. So I will probably have more exposure to CEH just given that I think he's going to be less popular. And really, that's the only take I have. Yeah, for me, I think CH is the better play of the two. Uh, usually, I would say go with go with Daryl. He's cheaper. But in this situation, I think you brought up a good point. Like CH was the main guy that they wanted to get involved, and it's just a freak thing. I think he'll be healthy. And Tampa Bay, as awesome as they are as a run defense, best in the league, They've given up the most running back receptions, and he's the best pass catcher they have in the backfield. So I think CH is a really easy way to get different in this game because he's going to come in, in my opinion, way less than the the four main pass catchers of Godwin, Evans, Tyreek, and Kelsey. And so if you did go Brady in the captain spot, then having CH as kind of a, a someone on the other side, I think is a, a smart way to build. But let's talk about these receivers and on let's stay on the Kansas City side Tyreek just went bananas we mentioned that game earlier three touchdowns 260 plus yards uh he's gonna be popular how popular do you think Hill and Kelsey will be in the same lineup though not popular at all and I think that that is a fantastic way to play guys that you feel super confident in in a way that's different and that that almost never happens in showdown um, I went back and looked on Fantasy Labs. They do a, a great job of looking at um, what percent of the field plays this player in a certain contest and all those sort of things. And it's sort of an easy way to sort of gauge like who's been a popular play in a certain scenario. When the Chiefs have been in showdown slates, Tyreek Hill is coming in as the captain at about 9%, 9.5% relative to, which is just egregious, relative to Travis Kelsey at about 12%. And so those two guys obviously are are direct leverage off Patrick Mahomes. So they're great captain choices and you can play them together. And the reason why you would do that is it, it, it's really to be different. It sounds silly because you're like, bets, these guys are great. I would want them both in my lineup. How is that getting different? But because of their salary, if you play them both, presumably you want to play Patrick Mahomes to get the stack points. You can't play Brady in that scenario. And you sort of have to play like a $200 just dart throw. Like I hope he catches one ball for 12 yards type of guy. But in these type of scenarios where let's say Mahomes just goes crazy and Tyreek goes for, you know, 150 and two and Travis Kelsey goes for 101, like that might be the optimal build. So I think that's a great way, Kyle, to just get super contrarian with guys that, you know, are good football players. And sometimes you can't do that in showdown. Yeah. The the big question though this week is, is it Hill or is it Kelsey? And Kelsey is coming in as a much more popular play. Uh, and his salary reflects that. We mentioned that earlier that he's, you know, the second most expensive player on this slate at 11,000. And the craziest thing you could do this week is say that Travis Kelsey isn't going to get, you know, seven, eight receptions. I mean, that's just where we're at right now is this is the most expensive tight end basically in DFS history. I mean, this guy's unbelievable. And so you have to make the call on Kelsey right now. I will, I will just tell people I will be underweight on Kelsey uh, not because I don't believe in him, but it's just it, it's at the point now where he's too popular and too expensive, and I just want to get different elsewhere. So Kelsey is someone that I'll play in a few lineups, but I'll definitely be underweight. Uh, but I like Hill a little bit more because you said people don't play him as much in that captain spot, and so I think he makes a lot of sense if you went Hill and you went uh, Mahomes as a flex, and then you figured out on the other side uh, a way to get different. What about some of these other receivers, though, for Kansas City? I mean, what about our boy? I mean, guys, this might be the last ride for Sammy Watkins. This might be it. If he even plays. 
No. <laughs> I mean, we've been saying that for three straight weeks, I feel like. And he's still limited with the calf issue. I don't have a strong take on the injury. We haven't seen him since week 16. So to be truthful, we don't know what we're going to expect. Um, I wrote him up in the DFS pass as a great tournament play because... You know, people look at the box score and they're like, who even is this guy? Has he been playing football? I don't even know. And and now we're not even sure what to expect. So, again, embrace the variance. I think he's a fine stack option if you want to go Mahomes as, as a captain. Getting Sammy Watkins as a way to get really different because everyone loves Miko Hardman. But the reality is, in the games where Sammy Watkins was playing and finished the game healthy, he played about 80% of the snaps. He's been seeing about a 16% target share in those games. So he has been involved very heavily um and at 4200 on DraftKings to me he's a great way to save some salary and get very very different do we know the status any updates on Demarcus Robinson he was a close contact for COVID stuff and they're waiting on results if he tests negative so any update on that no as of Thursday night when we're recording this it is still status quo he still needs to continue to test negative to be able to play by Sunday but I think we'll get final word I believe it's either Saturday evening uh, or early Sunday, so we should know plenty of, plenty of time ahead of lock. Yeah, that that just opens up a lot of different scenarios where if Robinson can't play and Watkins can't play, then we're looking at Nicole Hardman and Byron Pringle as legitimate options. Like in cash builds, I would be playing one of those two receivers no matter what. And then in tournaments, I think they're both awesome plays. If Robinson doesn't play what Watkins does, then Pringle doesn't really show up at all. If they both show up, then that brings Hardman into question. Uh, I love Hardman. He's actually one of my favorite plays this week. I think he's a sneaky play with the Chiefs DST because he has that special teams ability, which is, you know, really a low chance that that happens, but you get those double points there. And then I, I've mentioned this before a couple weeks ago. He has a ton of positive correlation with Tyreek Hill this year, which is crazy to think. But in games where Hardman's done well, Hill has done well, and I think that's how you can get different. And if you look at this Chiefs team last year, 61%, 61% of their snaps were three wide receivers or more on the field. This year, it's all the way up to 73%. So that that's a massive jump in terms of league, in terms of play calling. So they're basically saying, we're going to run three wide three-fourths of the time. And I think Hardman is a player that's getting more playing time that, you know, should be more expensive. But yeah, he's going to be a popular guy. Uh, he could take one of the house at any moment. So I, I like him in terms of Super Bowl, big moment. But uh, yeah, I think he'll be probably the more popular player. Um, he might even be more popular than Mike Evans considering his price. Yeah, I think he, he probably could be actually. It's because of the price. And it's the, kind of the way you have to think about these builds is is how do you get different. So I think that's a great call. I do think I sort of prefer, like if you like me, Cole, I prefer Sammy Watkins to play because I think that helps kind of keep his roster percentage at least in check somewhat. But yeah, I agree. Like if Sammy's out, how do you not play him? For sure. So let's go through a couple of these wide receivers and we'll finish with tight ends and, and go through a couple of different builds. But uh, on the Bucks side, Chris Godwin, uh, he can win in the slot. He's probably going to be a lot more popular than Evans, even though he's just $400 more. Uh, so Godwin, I think is a great play. And I think he's going to be a popular run back. Like if you're doing Mahomes as your captain and you're stacking with Hill or Kelsey, it's not hard to say Godwin on this side and then find some cheaper options. So I think Godwin's a fine play, but Evans is going to come in the lowest of those four pa main pass catchers. So how do you approach Evans? I think he's a great GPP play. Um, of, of the Bucks pass catchers, I guess you could include Gronk in this. There are there's, there are not many guys that you can say, this dude could score two touchdowns on Sunday, and you wouldn't be surprised, right? Mike Evans, when they get down at the one-yard line, Tom Brady throws him the football. So in these type of slates, you need every edge you can gain. And if you can play Mike Evans in the, in the flex, or excuse me, in the, the captain spot, you're automatically getting a ton of leverage. He's going to probably come in sub-10% in most contests at that spot. Let's say he goes for... Five or six catches, 75 yards, and two touchdowns. I mean, that right there is is huge, huge leverage, and you're able to spend up elsewhere to get Brady, Mahomes, et cetera, in your flex spot. So to me, he's going to be a guy I want to be overweight on, even though on paper the matchup looks more difficult. The Chiefs are pretty strong against perimeter wide receivers. They're a little bit weaker over the middle of the field where Goblin runs his route. So I think both are great plays. I think Mike Evans for sure is going to be less popular. You heard it here first, people, that Betts wants to be overweight. He wants to be fat. 
for for Mike Evans. That's that's Fill me much, up, baby. <laughs> that's how much he loves him. Um, Antonio Brown, he's up in the air as of this recording. Uh, Scotty Miller is interesting, and I think he'll be super popular if Antonio Brown is out because he's only thirty four hundred on DK. So, uh, yes, sure, go for it. He caught a lucky touchdown though, uh, in that uh, in that game earlier. So, gosh, that w- that should not have happened, man. I still can't believe he called out Tyree Kill as well for being saying he was just as fast as him. Did you see that interview? He's got a lot to learn, Scotty Miller. <laughs> yeah, and then Tyree Kill quote tweeted it and just like I think it was like two laughing emojis or something. So I think Tyree Kill is going to come out and have something to prove in this one. Scotty Miller is going to be out of the league in three years easily. All right, uh, let's talk about the <laughs> tight ends because Travis Kelsey. We really don't have to say very much about him other than he's super expensive. But on the Bucks side, there is some value here. Kansas City has allowed the seventh most tight end fantasy points. And over the last five games, they've allowed six touchdowns to tight ends. So your boy Cameron Brait, who we talked up a bunch uh, in that conference championship game, and he, he caught a touchdown. And then Rob Gronkowski, who went six for 106 against these Chiefs earlier in week 12. How do you feel about these Buccaneers tight ends? Yeah, I think they're both really, really strong plays. I think that, um, especially on DraftKings, they did a really good job of pricing up Cameron Brait because people are noticing that trend now, right? And we talked about it a couple weeks ago that Cameron Brait was running a few more routes and you know he was getting more targets, and, and all of a sudden DraftKings priced them so differently. I mean, Rob Gronkowski at $3,000 is just silly. And now we have Cameron Brait. He's still the backup tight end at 4800 So to me, the, the choice is obvious. I, I want to play Gronk in this matchup. Part of it's narrative-based. Part of it is, is based off data. So let me give you the narrative first. Are you telling me our boy Tommy, TB12, is not going to be in the five-yard line and look over and see his best friend lined up at the line of scrimmage and target him in the end zone? He is going to do it at least once or twice in this game. That's narrative street. But let me give you the data, which also tells you that is true. Five of his seven targets in the last three games, and granted, seven targets in three games is not good, but five of those seven targets have been in the red zone, so he's only targeting when it really matters to us, and at $3,000, if he catches a touchdown pass, he's basically paying off his salary for you, so I think to me, he is a a standout play this week. Um, Love him in tournaments. I think he's perfectly fine in cash as well. I'll definitely be, again, overweight on my boy, Gronk. Let me just be clear, TB12, Gronk, they are not my boys. But when I'm building lineups this week, uh, and just in looking at the Vegas line, you know, predicting Chiefs to win by three, back and forth affair. Like I have Brady as my captain, and then I'm pairing him with Chris Godwin and Rob Gronkowski. And I think those are just the best two players to give him in terms of the touchdown equity and you're getting leverage off of a popular Travis Kelsey. Now, you could have Gronk and Kelsey in the same lineup. I think that would actually be, you know, kind of different. But if you're just playing Gronk, then you're ridding yourself of a ton of roster percentage of Kelsey. And then you're saying who on the Chiefs side could actually help me get there. It's probably Tyreek. And then my boy Harrison Butker. <laughs> now we're talking. Let's go. I am so stoked that we get to talk about t- kickers on a DFS show because bets, they have been banished for, for most people's lives. But how do we approach kickers because they're super cheap and they kind of matter? I mean, they're probably going to kick a couple field goals. So there's at least a floor there that maybe you don't have with Scotty Miller or some of these other cheaper dudes. Yeah. I, I mean, hey, listen, the reality is they're going to kick some field goals. How many? we would be lying if we said we knew if it was going to be a heavy field goal game or not. Typically it favors more of the, um, you know, the lower scoring totals and that sort of thing. But I mean, I don't mean to be mean to Bruce Arians, but that man makes some questionable decisions. And if you're telling me it's like fourth and four at the 30 playing against Patrick Mahomes, is he not going to kick a field goal? He's going to kick a field goal. So (laughs) I think Ryan suck up is actually kind of an interesting play, especially in tournaments. Um, just given that I don't trust Bruce Arians' decision-making skills. Now, the only concern with that is, like, does Tom Brady say, listen, Bruce, we're not doing that. That's a dumb decision, and they don't let him. But I think they're they're fine, and, and they kind of correlate well uh, with quarterback plays, again, because when they score touchdowns and throw passes, 
you get an extra point on top of it. So I think they're perfectly fine to mix in. I wouldn't be necessarily building around them. And the data strongly shows do not play two of them in the same lineup. But I think one of them is fine. Sprinkle it in here and there. Yeah, don't play them in the captain if you're feeling frisky. Don't don't think about it. But if this game hits the under, then I think a kicker needs to be in your build. And if it's a back and forth affair, then and the game still hits the under, let's say instead of hitting 56, it hits 51. Then I think you could find that there's a, a kicker like Butker or Sutkip that uh, would actually be helpful. So, Betts, if you were building a Kansas City onslaught lineup, give me a couple players that you would say, hey, I, I think they need to be in this build. Yeah, the obvious is Patrick Mahomes. I don't, I don't know how they get there without him. Um, I think you put him in the, the MVP spot or the captain spot, depending on your site, or as a flex. And then, of course, you can always go with the the Travis Kelsey or Tyreek Hill, Mikkel Hardman. Kansas City defense, I think, is a good way to kind of continue to build that onslaught stack. Um, that's kind of how I would look at it. Like we talked about, too, the other option exists. If you want to play Tyreek in the captain, Travis Kelsey in the flex, Patrick Mahomes in the flex, no one is going to do it. And it's a great way to, to kind of really get contrarian. So I love both those builds. Yeah, and you'd have to find some stupid cheap options uh, to pair it with. But yeah, I think you need to think about this scenario where if the onslaught occurs, how does Tampa Bay respond? And so you probably want to put uh, Chris Godwin or maybe they got some early field goals. Maybe it was like Ryan Suckup hit two field goals early and then they just weren't scoring. Maybe it was Godwin score, and then that was it, and the rest of it is just Kansas City blowing them out. So that's one way to do it. What happens if this game hits the under, though? If this game hits the under, and we don't have quarterbacks as the optimal play for a captain or MVP, where would you go there? It's hard to fathom, but it does exist. I mean, in those scenarios, you're probably looking at least including one of the defenses. You're probably looking at at least one of the kickers, and you're probably correlating that kicker, excuse me, the defense, uh, with the running back on the team that you play the defense with. So, for example, we talked about it specifically on the Bucks side of the ball. Like, if you know, if they're dominating the game, maybe it's because Rojo ripped off, you know, an 80 yard touchdown run, and now the defense is dominating Patrick Mahomes. Again, not likely. It could happen. So, I think that's kind of what you need to look at if you're tr- sort of building around that contrarian game script. All right. So, any last words on this? Like, I think we both have the same read on the game. It's KC minus three. Uh, is if we were to take this uh, in terms of the spread and then money line, we'd, we'd take KC. But uh, any other thoughts just about this game and game scripts? I don't think so. I think we touched on on the, the most likely scenarios. But again, I just want to reiterate this to people over and over again is like throw maybe what you think is going to happen out the window and at least kind of be willing to, to make yourself uncomfortable when, when lock comes. <laughs> like, hey, what if this happens? It, it could get a little wild. So definitely be willing to be different. All right, so we're, let's talk about a couple of our favorite props, and this is an article that you put out, a special one for the DFS Pass, and something that we'd like to hopefully bring to the table this next year with the DFS Pass if people are interested. If you are at all interested in props, please message us on Twitter. Bets is at the Fantasy PT. I'm at Kyle underscore Borg. We think this is a growing market, and it's actually a way easier uh, thing to get into than just straight up betting on a game. Like with pr- player props, you can use a lot of the redraft tools and ideas that you have. And so we want to talk about our favorite props because this is where people play props the most in the Super Bowl. So bets, give me one of your favorite props and then I'll, I'll hit one of mine. All righty. I have been prepping for this game all week. I am locked and loaded with my prop bets. I'm ready to go. One of my favorites, my absolute favorite one on the board is the first score of the game a Tampa Bay field goal? In, Whoa. I know. It's going to be fun, and I'm going to be so excited when it happens. In the games where Tampa has won the coin toss, it was their, their first couple games of the playoffs, Bruce Arians has accepted the football. So if he gets the first possession, they probably can drive down the field. Maybe they don't convert. Again, I talked about it. If it's fourth and fourth to 30, he's kicking a field goal. So I'm going to lean towards that. And at the same time, when Andy Reid has won the toss, historically, he tends to defer more than take the ball at the start of the, of the game. So I'm leaning that way. That's my favorite play. You get plus 350 juice on it. So you lay 10 bucks, you win 35. So I think it's a, a pretty good bet. That is that is quite a good one. I'll say my favorite one is total sacks by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, including overtime, over two and a half. So when these two teams played in week 12, 
The Bucks had two sacks on Patrick Mahomes, which may sound like, oh, well, why are you bringing this up? Well, three sacks is not actually that hard for a team that's one of had one of the greatest adjusted sack rates in the league. And at plus 115, I think that you can find yourself in a situation where Tampa Bay defense shows up. They do have a really good defense. Like there's holes in the secondary, and I think Mahomes will be able to exploit that. But because this guy loves to extend plays and because Tampa Bay has a good pass rush, I will take the Tampa Bay sacks to be over two and a half. I think that one's just an easy one. I like that a lot. What do you think about the over four total sacks in the game? Would you hit that too? Over four total sacks? Yep. Uh, that's that's close there. That's It's hard for me to say five as just like a, a bankable total. Yeah, I wrote it up. I actually took it. And it's because, like you said, the Bucks. like if we're projecting to potentially get three, I think the Chiefs can at least get one on the statue in the pocket, Tom Brady, at this stage of his career. So the other thing is, like, they got after Josh Allen quite a bit two weeks ago, more than most teams have been doing. So I think that's one that I like. Um, but I definitely think the way it gets there is the Bucks lead the way in terms of, of being able to get after Mahomes. Keeping it, the train rolling here. Dude, how about our boy, TB12, over 0. 0.5 rushing yards? <laughs> yes, one yard is all we need to win this bet. It is plus 120. The reason I like it is because he is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL at the quarterback sneak. And it is a little bit risky. But I project this game to be a Chiefs win. And assuming that they have the ball at the end of the game, it's going to be Patrick Mahomes kneeling down, not Tom Brady. The way we lose is if he, you know, two quarterback sneaks, he gets two yards, and all of a sudden he has negative three yards at the end of the day because of his kneel downs. And yes, I am very much scarred from last year where I had the Patrick Mahomes over rushing, and he knelt down to go under by one yard. It was it was brutal. Um, but I, I again, I, I think you only make this bet if you think that the Chiefs win the game, which I do. No, that's a good call, and you're asking for him to sneak one yard. That's um, it. That's one all yard. We need. One yard, people. I mean, yeah, it 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 scares me just thinking about it because I'm like, this old man needs to run <laughs> for one yard, but I think he could do it. I'm gonna stay with TB12, and I'm gonna take the over on 24 and a half completions. And normally we don't talk up uh, props that are minus, but minus 112. Tom Brady has averaged 30 completions per game in the Super Bowls. If you take away the first one where he was basically a game manager. I mean, the guy's been in nine. We have a pretty good sample size of Super Bowls, uh, which is crazy to talk about. But in the regular season, he averaged 25. So that's the over. And in the playoffs, he's averaged more as well. So I like Tom Brady over 24 and a half completions. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I actually like that one quite a bit. There's also a bet you can make on DK sportsbook they have it as, as the completion percentage for each quarterback and last time i looked yesterday it was 62 and a half percent completion percentage for tom brady i also love that over and it correlates exactly with what you're saying so yes i'm very much in on that so let's go over a couple of fun props bets because that's what super bowl is kind of known for is those kind of weird out there uh wagers that people make on things like gatorade color and whatnot but Give me one of your favorite fun props. Well, Kyle, the most fun prop of this game is going to be the length of the national anthem, which I, I think it's a great way to kick off the game. You know, you're watching your your wife or your husband or your boyfriend or whoever looks at you like, why do you have a stopwatch out for the national anthem? Don't worry about that, honey. Don't worry about that. I don't have $100 on this. Um, and you're looking at the time being a minute and 59 and a half seconds. That is the current over under most have come under this mark in the Super Bowl history. However, this is a duet. There are two people singing in this game who going back and forth. Let's be honest. It's been a very emotional year for everyone in 2020. Maybe they just hold that note like a little extra to tr sort of like drag it out and really give it that feel. So I lean towards the over. I think you get a little bit of extra juice on that as well. So I lean over uh, basically two minutes, but I think it's going to come down to a, a pretty good sweat. You heard it here first, guys. You got some juice on the over, on the national anthem. We don't have a model for that built out just yet, but Betts feels good about it. Maybe we'll call <laughs> it the, the duet model. If there's two, two people singing, you just you hit the over. You take, you hit the over, you smash, you smash the button. Um, I'll take this one and these fun props. Let's just be clear. We're just mentioning these cause they're fun. Uh, we're not telling you to bet your, your house on it. Um, 
Don't do or that. do it. <laughs> <laughs> the Doink Special, as it's called on, on DK Sportsbook. That's why I had to say this. The Doink Special. Any field goal or extra point attempt to hit the uprights or the crossbar. If it happens, it's plus 375 bets. So uh, no is minus 590. So it's not that helpful. But I think it was worth mentioning. I will mention the trick play special because I actually feel a little confident about this one, Bets. The tricks play special is the total number of players in the game to attempt a pass. And that includes if the game goes to overtime. The over of two and a half is plus 165. So in this game, if there is just one other player other than Mahomes or Brady just to attempt a pass, you know, maybe it's a wide receiver. Maybe it is a punter or a kicker, which probably won't happen. Or a backup quarterback. If someone gets injured, it's plus 165. So bets, how do you feel on that one? Am I crazy? No, I think it's actually <laughs> really intriguing. Um, and we know Andy Reid, right? Like he likes to draw up these trick plays, especially when he has extra time to prepare sort of that mad scientist when he has extra time to prepare for a huge game, he kind of pulls out all the stops. So I would not be shocked to see, you know, them run a little like jet sweep with Tyreek Hill and all of a sudden he stops and throws it back to Mahomes or something like that. So I think it actually is a pretty intriguing bet. Can't you see Sammy Watkins just taking it around and they just chuck it deep to Byron Pringle? <laughs> no, because he's going to grab his hammy before he gets the pass off. <laughs> All right, let's do this last little fun prop, and then we'll we'll finish with the game bets. It's the Fat Man TD. The Fat Man TD is any offensive lineman to score a TD. Is this just the craziest bet if you were to take this? <laughs> yes, it is. But at plus 2,000 odds, like, what the heck, man? If you were to take the no, you know, it's minus 10,000. Like, it's just stupid. Like, no, there's no, no point in betting bet this. <laughs> yeah. You would feel like the worst person in the world if you see that fat man doing his dance because he scored a touchdown in the Super Bowl. His whole family's excited. You're not. You're not excited. You actually are hating his whole family because of it. Meanwhile, it's the best moment of his entire life. Yeah. You know, the whole world's celebrating like, isn't this awesome? It's going to be like a viral <laughs> moment. And you are just so mad. But yep. <laughs> uh, let's finish uh, with something that we like to do here. We're going to finish with a game, people. It's a good way to finish this DFS year. A little competition between me and Betts. Betts and I have both, without showing each other, pulled three props from the DK Sportsbook. And we want to see what the other person does. And so uh, hopefully the winner will get something. Uh, maybe some. Uh, maybe you'll send me some Chipotle or something. That'd I'd love nice. to. I'd love to. Let's call, let's, let's call it Chipotle. How's that? All right. Fair enough. Cool. I just, just came up with that. So we're each going to give uh, three different props. We'll go back and forth. And on the spot, you have to give your conviction of the uh, the over-under. So, Betts, why don't you start us off? All right, man. I'm going to present to you Patrick Mahomes. Are we going over or under 325 and a half passing yards? Eesh. 325 and a half. He went for 462. And when they played, which is just nuts. I think I will take the over because I don't think that they will have any success running the ball. And this team just says, who cares? Let's just go for it. So I will take the over because he's the best player on the planet. Do I feel super confident? No. But <laughs> And I told you before we started recording, I was like, just, you know, I bet all of these. So I'm going to be able to tell you my thoughts after you answer. <laughs> What'd you I, I took the under. He's actually been under this mark, uh, in, in I think it, the stat is like six of his last eight or six of his last nine or something like that. Now, granted, it's going to be a sweat. Like he's going to come in probably around two ninety to three twenty, and oh my gosh, I'm going to be nervous. But I took the under, so for the sake of Chipotle and my bank account, I hope that the under comes in. Betts is rooting for the Tampa Bay defense, which is just the worst possible thing for an Atlanta fan. So I will be rooting for Mahomes. Uh, and then Brady can win me some some cash as well. All right, I'm going to ask you my first one, Chris Godwin, or as his parents call him, Rod Godwin. His first name is Roderick. Uh, Rod Godwin, 77 and a half receiving yards. 
This is tricky because in the splits where Antonio Brown plays, granted, Godwin is, is always good, but he is great when Antonio Brown is out. So you're basically asking me to predict the future. <sighs> I'm going to lean over. We talked about it, just the Chiefs being weakest in the middle of the field. We've seen him have good games in the past, especially in, in scripts where it projects for him to play well. He's been heavily involved in the offense, about a 19% target share recently. And I sent you that that message in Slack today, Kyle. I don't know if you ended up seeing it. Per Next Gen stats, like the the Bucks are running a ton of crossing routes, especially in the playoffs. That's where Chris Godwin does damage, is over the middle of the field. So I'm going to take the over, which means he's going to come in at 77 yards. No, I think that's that's the right call. That's actually what I would take too. Uh, Godwin's average of the last two years, 83 receiving yards per game in the regular season. It's the fourth highest in the league. So yeah, I like Godwin. Betts is taking the over. All right, so give me my next one. All right, sticking with the Bucks. Mike Evans, over under four and a half receptions. Ugh. Mike Evans is probably one of the hardest players in props because we've seen Mike Evans just completely you know, one catch for one yard and a touchdown. I will take the over because I think that he's going to be involved. I think he's a good receiver. I think he knows how to get open and I think he'll be needed, especially them coming back. So five receptions, Mike Evans, you can do it, buddy. I believe in you. <laughs> I took right, the under. I'm going to give you... Oh, good. This is perfect, Bets. This is great. You're either going to, you're either going to make a lot of money and win some Chipotle or lose a ton of money and owe me some Chipotle. <laughs> so this is perfect. There's no middle ground here. This is perfect. All no, right, I'm going to give you a, play, a player prop parlay on DK Sportsbook. So you can do this where you pick a uh, certain position like running back, and then you have a yardage total, and then which team is going to win. So player prop parlay bets, which player is going to hit of the running backs 50-plus rushing yards and win the game. So of Rojo, Fat Lenny, CEH, and Daryl Williams. Wow. <laughs> so I this so was, I think the Chiefs win. So you have to pick one of the Chiefs running backs. I'll go CEH. <laughs> but the thing is, like, no, this is silly because, <laughs> because you know what? The over, I looked at their props. They're 30 and a half for both Daryl and CH, which means the sports books have no idea who the running back is going to be. The other thing is the, the Bucks cannot let anyone through. Like they are just so dominant. Now they have Vita Vea back. You know what? Screw it. I'm going with this. I'm going Rojo at plus 350 to win the game and be the one with over 50. I'm being contrarian with this one. You heard it here, guys. Rojo. Bets I his love favorite Rojo. Player. I love him. All right. Give me your last one. All right, man. For my last one here, I'm rolling with. Fat Len, in his first carry, is it going to be over under three and a half yards? This is an actual prop that you can bet on, and I did. Gosh. Well, I know how you feel about Fat Len. <laughs> so, which is he's I'm going to stay with my theme. I'm going to go with over just to screw you over. It could happen. And the only the only reason I took the under, and it's I put a very, very, very small bet on this, but I think it's just so funny. Like, Bruce Arians is one of the most predictable coaches in the entire NFL. We talked about it. Just he can't resist the first and 10 run for two yards. I mean, that's what Leonard Fournette does in the first carry. And it's not his fault. He's just his coach is calling suboptimal plays on the first down over and over and over again. So on his very first carry, my man Len is going to run to the back of his lineman for a one yard gain. And I'm going to be smiling. I am going to be going nuts. And people are like, that guy ran for four yards. Why are you so happy? Yes. <laughs> Four Suck it bets. So so I took all overs, which is kind of insane, but hey, I, I want to go against you. That's kind of the uh, gamesmanship here. But your last one bets, I had to go with the kickers because I love some kickers in fantasy. So total successful field goals over or under three and a half. <sighs> this is tough. This is really tough. That line seems just, just right. I will take the under i think that the chiefs get out to a big win they find the end zone over and over again and in doing so the bucks can't afford to kick field goals in late in the game so i will take the over or i'm sorry the under the under all right so just to recap uh bets took 
Chris Godwin over 77 and a half receiving yards. He took 50 yards and the win with Rojo, which uh, just sounds juicy to me. Uh, and he took under three and a half field goals uh, for both teams combined. For myself, I took Patrick Mahomes over 325 and a half passing yards. Took Mike Evans over four and a half receptions because that's easy money. And then Fat Lynn, his first carry, going to go a robust four yards would just be uh now now what if he goes like three yards and like i don't know like three fourths how do you feel about that i wouldn't like that do they i'm assuming they don't have the no. actual that sucks <laughs> no. that sucks. it's it's whole numbers <laughs> all right i you gotta hope in four yards of carry let's 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 do it lynn so that's gonna wrap us up for our super bowl show it was super fun this year See how I put that in there. I and yeah, no, player props was a good way to end this bets and some friendly competition. So any last words for the people as we're signing off? No, man, what a fun year. This is going to be a great game this Sunday. Just enjoy it. I mean, heck, we didn't even know if we'd have football this year. So to get to the Super Bowl is just fantastic. We will see you guys this summer. Can't wait. Hope you guys win some cash. And we'll see you guys on Twitter. Listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers DFS podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com.